So just when you thought Sony couldn't impress us any more, more than with the A7S III for the time being, Sony was like, hold my beer. Hey, this is Sony Deck Productions. I'm Ryan. I'm here to film weddings, make films, and teach both the creative and business aspects of filmmaking. If that sounds awesome to you, consider subscribing. So while I was at my day job today, Sony decided to announce something pretty cool. A new camera. Now, okay, look. Manufacturers announce new cameras all the time, but there was something about this. The Sony Alpha 1 that made me go, hold on. They might be onto something here. Now, according to the announcement, which I've got right here on my phone, phone uh, for video related stuff, it's going to be shooting up to 8K, up to 30 frames a second in 422 10-bit, 4K up to 120 frames a second, and then no information about, about frame rates at 1080p, but I'm guessing if it's anything like the A7S III, we might get like up to 240. It's also gonna have in-body image stabilization, uh, raw out of full size HDMI, and a bunch of other cool things. And okay, look, I'm gonna get to the point here. I, with Canon announcing the R5, what was it, last year, the year before, and it being kind of a train wreck, I wouldn't blame anyone for thinking, okay, I'm a bit hesitant simply because of the fact it's like Canon attempted this and, but here's the thing. What Canon did, they, is kind of weird. I mean, first they announced this camera that can shoot in 8K RAW, 4K 120, and then they kind of screwed up. A lot. They knew about the overheating, so they ended up putting an artificial uh, timer on it. And then when people realized and called them out on it, they're like, okay, here's a firmware update. So it's like now the timer, it stops like automatically when it actually starts heating up. But, he, but the thing is, someone was actually able to figure out a way to dissipate the heat a lot better. A YouTube channel by the name of DIY Perks actually found a way. And do you know what he did? He opened up the camera, put some copper in it, and then attached a fan to the back of the camera. And yeah, if Canon wanted to up the price slightly for that addition of copper, okay. But here's the thing. Instead of Canon admitting, okay, we screwed up, Canon's like, you video guys should not have expected us to actually deliver. It's your fault. That kind of attitude is like, I'm never buying a Canon camera again. In fact, if I ever have to rent a camera that has one of Canon's mounts to it, guess what? It's definitely not going to be a Canon camera. If it's an EF mount, it'll probably be one of Blackmagic Designs. If it's an RF mount, Red Komodo. The reason why I bring this up has to do with the fact that I am hoping Sony saw this and was like, okay, we know what to aim for. Because if I recall correctly, let me see in here. Yeah, one, one of the uh, note, notes here on uh, the article I'm reading from Alpha, Alpha Universe uh, talks about how it has a unique heat dissipating structure, keeps image sensor and image processing engine temperatures within the normal operating range, preventing overheating while manufacturing compact body dimensions. It also makes it possible to record 8K 30 frames a second video continuously for up to, for approximately 30 minutes. Now, okay, they admit it up front right there that's gonna be a little bit of a limit when shooting in 8K. And I'm sure that if you were to just use it to shoot 4K, that whole heat thing might not be as much of an issue. I won't know until I actually rent one and try it out for myself. The camera is also going to have uh, in-body image stabilization. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot like or better than the A7S III. And it is going to use the new type of uh, media slots that the A7 III introduced, the Fast Express Type A. Which makes sense because the, the data rates that's associated with shooting in 8K is going to need something super fast. You might be thinking to yourself, okay, this is all good. And aside from that whole 30 minute limited 8K, what, is there any other catches? Aside from the knee of the proprietary media, if you want to shoot at full quality. Yeah, there is. The price tag. 
it's got it's going to be having a price tag of six thousand five hundred dollars to purchase kind of one of the big reasons why i said i was simply gonna rent rent it um because like <laughs> yeah the whole um the whole price tag kind of makes it impossible for me to actually purchase at the very least at this time but like i gotta say um with some of the stuff that Sony has been doing lately in the consumer video space, I gotta say, I'm definitely considering giving it a shot. I did mention in one of my last videos that I am looking at shooting um, possibly the Red Komodo for a big scale project. But with this announcement, I might actually also put the Sony Alpha 1 into consideration for that. But uh, I want to know what you think. Uh, please leave a comment telling me if you think, hey, Sony Alpha 1, one looks awesome. No thank you. Just let me know what you think. My name is Ryan, and I'm out. Peace.